Okay, hi all. My name is Alex Cabrilla, and I'll be presenting a research paper on content inequalities for two classes of random variables. Um, and so I guess some background and probability theory is required before we talk about what these content inequalities mean. Uh, so in probability, we work with random variables, which are kind of just, you can think of these random functions, which uh, take real valued numbers. Um, and they do this according to some distribution effects. So like the distribution determines kind of the densities of where the values tend to cluster on the real line and this kind of thing. Uh, so, okay, once we have this notion of random variable, then we uh, define this notion of expectation. So this EX here, and really you can just think of this intuitively as the average value of a random variable. Um, there is a more formal definition of this. this. It doesn't matter too much for this presentation, I think. Uh, and so then lastly, I, I need to define the teeth moment of a random variable. And so we write it this way. It's kind of this bracket P, absolute value P. And it's defined as the expectation of the absolute value of X raised to the P and then all to the one over P truth. Um, and you can kind of think of these moments as generalizations of the variance. Um, if we recall for a distribution of kind of like the distance of the observed values from the mean, so how much it spreads itself out. And it, uh, really the tail somehow, can, or the, the moments, the higher order moments somehow for large P control the tails of the distribution. So like if the tails are really wiggly or large, then the peak moment's gonna be pretty large as well. Um, and so controlling the moments in general allows us to control the tails of the distribution. And that's something that we want to be able to do pretty well because for example, we have these tail inequalities. This is an example of the turnoff bound down here. And so we, when we ask the question, what is the probability that X is greater than or equal to some constant value A, we can bound it with this kind of an expression on the left-hand side, or we take the expectation of X function. And you'll just have to take me at face value when I say that this is bound, that this is uh, um, related to the moment, uh, the, the piece moments here. And if we can control the piece moments, then we can control this expression. And bounding this expression, really, really bounding these tail inequalities is nice because if we want to say that some event is unlikely, that's this is what we want to do. So this is what gives us uh, confidence and probable estimates and stuff that can be used all over the place in physics and finance and this kind of thing. So what are tension inequalities then? Well, uh, they give us estimates on the moment. Uh, so we take sums of real random variables and then we take coefficients and then we sum them up in this kind of thing here. And then we compare the moments of the sum. So we want to say that, uh, you know, if you take the pth moment of the sum S, it can be bounded via some constant dependent only on P and Q by the pth moment. And like I said before, really these moments control how large or wiggly the tails of the distribution are. So uh, we have like kind of these distributions of Gaussian here, and we can say that, okay, this, this large one here is gonna have the smallest moment because its tails are pretty well behaved, whereas the, the, the smaller ones, which are more spread out, will ha have larger moments because um, they have more mass at the tails. And so they're a little harder to, to control. So what's our contribution? Well, we consider a specific class of tension inequalities for these uh, type L random variables. And <clears throat> what I think is important to communicate is that we are interested in this class because the type L random variables have nice applications uh, in probability theory, which is what we're studying. So we study them for their own sake, but also in other fields of mathematics, such as complex analysis and functional analysis. And also physics, this is actually where they first cropped up, where you had these people studying icing models, icing models and statistical physics, trying to model these uh, interactions between different electrons in a field and see how they all oriented themselves. Um, and then we developed, as, as, as a result, this took lots of probability theory because it really is a statistical problem. And somehow the constant inequalities for these things naturally in a row there, so. That's where we get them from. And so what is our result? Well, if we have uh, a type L class and we have a random variable X, which is type L, then for even integers, P and Q, we have these comparisons in the moments where the constant out in front is Gaussian. 
Um, and this is nice because, okay, then for a wide variety of variables, we have a new kinship type inequality. And because we have a new kinship type inequality, then we're able to control the moments of these random variables. And that in turn gives us tail bound. And so suddenly for a large class, we suddenly better understood the kind of asymptotic distributions of the random variables that we're working with. And that's, that's really the goal of probability theory, gives us control. So in conclusion, this is what we've done. Um, we have moment comparisons and a new kinship inequality for type L random variables. And in the future, I think it would be interesting to investigate connections between this type L class and machine learning techniques. So there's this whole learning theory aspect in machine learning that uh, I think could benefit from more control in general over the kind of estimates that we're working with. And so maybe this would be useful here. That concludes my presentation. Here are some references, and thank you for listening.